Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Jesse. And here's her story. Dear Ollie, my name is Jesse. I have two daughters. I will call them oldest and youngest in this message. Been watching your videos for a while now. They helped me through a tough situation I found myself in with my in-laws. That has since been resolved and everything has been all right on that front. This is a whole nother monster dealing with my ex-husband. I left my ex-husband 12 years ago. I was 27, he was 28. I left nothing. I left with nothing but a suitcase and two trash bags he threw my clothes into. We had two wonderful daughters, ages three and five. After that, discussions I left in his primary care. He had a good job with insurance and can support both of them while I had to start over from scratch. After the divorce, we were granted the normal joint custody with standard visitations. They live with him and I had every other weekend, except he is signed to provide insurance. Shortly after our divorce, he started dating a married 20 year old that soon after became pregnant with his child. He immediately separated from her and signed his rights away of the child the first chance he had. This illegitimate child lives but five minutes away from my daughters and goes to school with them and they have no idea who she is or that she exists. Not long after that, not long after that girl, he started dating a woman that lost her only child to CPS for child negligence and endangerment. He has remained with this woman and never, mar and never married her to this day. Throughout the years, there have been signs of potential parental alienation, but I did not know what it was or how to go against it. There was a constant conflict about the visitation schedule and changing weekends unexpectedly or asking to change holidays so we had more time with them. I would call regularly and was given the runaround about when they would call me back. I never got a call back unless one of the girls answered. All that was handled poorly on my part and I lost out a lot of parental time due to his moving the schedule around and not knowing how to prevent it. He always believed that primary custody gave him ownership of the children and I was only renting, I was only renting on my weekends and he, had to, and he had to let me see them. I was scared to even speak out against, I was scared to even speak out against him for fear he may make it more difficult to see my kids. Around four years ago, I got remarried to a man that I had been seeing for a few that I had been seeing for a few years. The girls had no problems with him, and my ex didn't seem to mind. My ex told the girls to always be cautious around my boyfriend before we got married. My husband has been a wonderful stepfather, always trying to find new ways to have family activities while the girls are in our care. He even took them to their first movie when we got together. He always had an easy time talking to them and being able to relate to a lot of the things they were interested in. When they got older, they were, brought, they were bought cell phones and I was able to get in contact with them more often. But I soon learned my ex and his girlfriend constantly ma monitored their cell phone conversations and locations during my visitation. The girls always had to be in constant contact with their dad through text messages, even during the short time I was allowed to see them. The girls live in constant fear of disappointing or upsetting their father, and his rules are even, and his rules are law even at my house. What goes on at dad's house is none of mom's business, so don't be talking about it. I have been left out of many school events that would request parents to attend or other special events that my ex would always call dibs and take his girlfriend in what would be my place as a co-parent. Mainly, I'm not told about these events till after they are passed because the girls didn't tell, didn't tell me till my visits. Things went from bad to worse when my youngest, now 15 years old, asked to come live with me this past spring. She had been unhappy and was treated as an outcast at my ex's house. The girlfriend had been in charge of spankings for years and would constantly belittle her, and my ex would constantly ignore her. Why would you let someone else put their hands on your child? See, 
I, I understand you didn't speak out out of fear. Okay. I, I, I'd be wondering why you left in the first place. I mean, for the conditions you left in to just leave with nothing and have him pack two garbage bags full of your clothes and you leave your two daughters behind. You know, I, I would ask why. Well, what were the what what was the circumstances behind that? <clears throat> the girlfriend once slapped a cup of water into the youngest face because she wasn't paying attention, saying, "Do I have your attention now?" Yeah, that would, that would be one time. That would be one time. That that, that would happen. I was told none of this till the day my daughter asked to live with me, okay, because she was not told because she was told not to tell me, but was tired of living that way. My youngest was in possession on the the youngest was in my possession on the last day of one of my weekends when she decides to call her dad and tell him what she wants. The oldest, knowing what was going on, had already left for her dad's house since she can now drive herself. When the youngest tries to call my ex, he immediately hangs up on her two times. I message him, you need to talk to your daughter. He responds, I will talk to her when she comes home. She's supposed to be home at six. You need to have her home in an hour. And she's at the age where she can make a decision where she wants to live. I say, that's your daughter. I say, that's, that is your daughter. She wants to talk to you and you hang up on her twice. He says, I will talk to her when she comes home. He picks her up the next day, and she has never been the same. That day, I call all the law offices in town looking for someone to grant my child's request. A woman took my case. I tell her about the tracking, constant texting, and how they are not allowed to really involve me in anything outside my house. She says, as long as he doesn't change her mind, we have a case, and the oldest may follow along. <clears throat> But the moment my youngest left my house, I was cut off from both of them. I usually had communications with them every few days, but I had heard nothing until their next visit a week and a half later. That all happened during the month of June. The girls have stayed silent and distant from me since the youngest asked to live with me. I don't know what was said to them to suddenly treat me differently. All my ex does is ignore my text messages when I ask what happened. My lawyer said the best time to serve custody papers were while the kids were in my care so we could keep them from being involved for as long as possible. So he would be served during my extended summer visitation since I would have them the full month of July. We also got the girls new phones so the tracking and constant monitoring would stop during my time with them. I told my ex about the new phones and to take, the and to take their phones before they make their way to my house. He agreed, or so I thought. The first day of July comes around. The girls show up, and they have their dad's phones. I told them their dad was asked to keep them for the month. I, requ I request to give the phones to me. They become very agitated and refuse to give them to me. I was not going to, they were not going to let me take their phones. Then it comes out. The oldest says, Dad told us you didn't want us to have our phones. He said we should be able to have our own phones and you can't take them because they're ours. After a few hours of, talking, of arguing and talking back and forth, they finally hand them over and I give them their new phones. My ex's girlfriend shows up at my doorstep uninvited. The oldest tells me she's here for the phones. My youngest answers the door and starts a quiet conversation. I listen at the door for a moment. Youngest, I tried to handle it like dad said. Girlfriend, let's just get through this bullshit mess and hope she stops acting childish. I open the door and hand her the phones. I say, I hope this will be the last of the interference. Girlfriend, it's not going to be. I close the screen and walk off. I hear the girlfriend yell at my youngest. Tell her the, inf the interference will stop once she grows up. And so ends day one of July. The first week goes by in silence. The girls don't seem to want to interact with me, and when I do try to get their attention, they ignore me. Then comes the day their dad has served the custody papers. 7th of July. All hell breaks loose again. He immediately tells them of the papers. They come asking me questions. All I say is, youngest name, this is what you wanted, so I'm keeping my word to you. Youngest, I don't want to live with you anymore. I say, 
well, we, we will see what happens. Their attitudes really didn't change after that, just kept to themselves until I found the youngest texting after midnight. I had a rule against texting after midnight. So I took her phone up. So I took her phone up. That's when I found his text messages bad mouthing me and saying how sorry he was she had to be here. He is an example. Here is an example of the day he got served. X to youngest. Looks like your mom has filed for custody. I've been served papers today and hopefully I will see you later. Love you. Your mother isn't going to let me see you. She's going to try to take you away forever. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman doing this. This is just disgusting. This is just disgusting. You have done nothing wrong. This is her way of having a family without putting in any, any, in any effort for the last 12 years. <clears throat> Many more just like those, quite a few even before you were served custody papers. I confronted the youngest about her dad's messages and that I wasn't taking her away from ever, taking her away forever and asked why things have changed. She only became silent and didn't want to say anything to me. I even told her she could have her phone back. All she had to do was ask and promise not to listen to her dad's lies. She never asked for her phone back as she stayed silent for five days. Not a word to me or my husband. She stayed in her room the whole time. In a complete reversal, my oldest seemed to open up as the days went on. We would invite her boyfriend over to watch movies while my husband would cook on his grill. We went out and bought an above-ground pool. The oldest and I would spend hours outside swimming around. The only thing I noticed was her dad was always texting her, and she would have to stop what she was doing and respond. A few times I saw her ask him to stop when he would start asking about me. He was also asking her to pass her phone off to the youngest while the youngest was grounded. I told her she couldn't talk to her dad or block him from her phone. Wait, I told her she couldn't talk to her dad or block him from, from her phone. After five days of silence, I returned the youngest phone and things actually normal out. She starts talking to me. We let her friends come over and have, a, and have sleepovers a few days out of the week, coming out of her room and interacting with us. She started going out and doing family things, twice even going out to, to a guided art class, making a vibrant colored heart and sunset over the river. We... We were all finally having fun, knowing the whole time their dad was constantly texting them and having to respond in a timely manner. First two weeks of July were hell. The last two were not that bad. Once they went home, at the end of July, I knew something bad was going to happen. The 8th of August, my oldest turned 17. She comes to my house for her birthday and acts worse than the first day of July. Visibly agitated at being at my house, the youngest is back to ignoring everything and talking down to some of my family members there for the party. My husband was prepared to buy the oldest a new set of tires for her car because the front tires were bald. She refuses the tires because it would mean her going home without her car for a day. I gave her that car, but my ex hasn't taken care of it. She continues to mope around my house like it's the worst day of her life. I asked the youngest what happened. She just refuses to say anything to me. This is only eight days after smiling goodbyes at the end of July. How could he change them so quickly? That was the last time they had been to my house. I try talking to them every other day to help explain what's going on, to fix what happened to them, to treat me this way. I receive nothing from them. I finally call the oldest and she answers. I say I know this is hard on everyone. I don't want you to feel forced into coming to my house. I would love to see you. I love you. I want you to visit me. She says the only reason I, won't, I wouldn't want to live with you is because school is 20 minutes away. It's five from her dad's house. I say I know it's what your dad has put in your head. 20 minutes isn't a bad thing. That really isn't a good reason to not want to see me every day when your dad has that opportunity. I hear my ex's girlfriend in the background and hear her say, give me that phone. Girlfriend to me, don't be talking to these girls. Who is, I'd be like, bitch, don't you, stay out of my daughter. 
girl, don't be talking to these girls unless it's something positive and productive. I say, I'm only trying to mend this relationship. You have messed up. Let me talk to my daughter. Girlfriend, no, you have lost that. I hang up. I hang up on her. I get a text message from my ex. He says, you can reach the girls on my phone between 7 and 8. No exceptions. I say, okay, I'll see the girls Friday, August 16th. I come to find out he blocked me from their phones, in or out. They can't call me from their phones, even if they wanted to. Then comes the 16th of August. That was supposed to be my weekend visitation. 6.30 p.m. rolls around. The girls aren't at my house. The oldest has been driving to my house for visitation for a year now. Why would this weekend be any different? I message my ex. I say the girls left. If the girls left your house at, my, at six, they should be at my house now. If they haven't, send them on. He responds via decree. That's it. Nothing else. The divorce decree states I am to pick them up at his house on my visitation weekends. So I decide to drive to his house. I also feel that a confrontation could happen when I get there. So I call the county sheriff for a civil standby to accompany me to their house. Good idea. Sheriff pulls up to the front yard. I talk to him saying it's in it's my possession weekend. He says, okay, but I can't force anybody to leave. I say, I understand, and I just want, it, want a record. I see the oldest car is on blocks with the front tires removed. Good, new tires will keep her safe. We walk to the front door and ring the doorbell. The oldest opens the door and the youngest walks out. I said, ready to leave? The oldest and the youngest both say no. The sheriff asks if they want to leave for the record, and they answer the same. I, I explain, I will just want my time with them. Then the oldest says, I just can't do this anymore. I say, I understand, I'm working on it. I start to walk off and start to say something else when the ex-girlfriend says, I want her off my property. I was all, already leaving, so I turn around. I say, I didn't know this was your property. They aren't married. The ex says, get off my property in front of my kids. So I leave and the sheriff stands at their front door while I drive off. <clears throat> the next day I pass my oldest driving in her car. I think to myself, if you really change those tires, so where is she at so while so while she is at school I find her car in the in the school parking lot. Did you give her the car? The car is in the school parking lot. Tow it back to your house. So your car is in her car. If that car is still yours, Next time she goes to school, tow that motherfucker back to your house because it's your car. It's your car. So while she's at school, I find her car in the school parking lot and there are a lot of old ball and there are the old ball tires back on her car. So he removed the car tires so she wouldn't so she would tell the cops she couldn't go. The blocks and tires removed on Friday was a sh was a show for when I came to their house. I have tried to call them this past week and it says the girls numbers have both been changed and con disconnected. I haven't heard from them since I was sent away from my ex's house. Today is Friday, August 30th, my visitation weekend. I get a civil standby to protect me from my ex and girlfriend's harassment. The girls go a step further this time. The oldest say, we never want to see you again. The youngest says, I don't want to see you anymore. Then they say this with the sheriff standing right there. I can only imagine what is going through his head thinking, what did I do to make them say that? My ex says, I'm not keeping them here. They don't want to, I don't, they don't want to go. I won't force them. Girls, you are free to go if you want to. Both say no. With tears in my eyes, I just walk away. I don't say bye, and I knew at that moment they would be forever lost to me. How could someone change someone else, someone else so thoroughly in such a short amount of time? How can a dad support those kind of thoughts in a child towards their mother? <clears throat> it was my fault for going against his law. These are my girls. This is my family. They will never be yours. Those are the thoughts I can see my ex having. He has won. But in the end, it's my girls are the only ones that have really lost. They have lost me, their mother, their outlet away from chaos that is my house. I am taking myself, I'm, I am, 
I am taking myself, his supply away from him when he can't use those girls against me. What is really going to happen to them? The lawyer can't believe he would block their phones from me, change their phone numbers without telling me he has children. He says the children do not have a choice about changing visitation. That is my ex's fault for not mending the relationship between me and the girls, and we can take him to court for this. Is it worth it? Can I really save them with only four or six days a month, not including holidays over the next year or three years if I never do see if I ever do see them again? Thank you for your time. <clears throat> People might disagree with me at this point. Your daughters are old enough to know better. Your daughters are old enough to know better. At 15, 17, going on 18 at this point, your daughters are old enough to go to know better. Okay, your daughters are in it for the cash and the prizes from, from dad. She don't want to lose her car. The other one don't want, That's what they're about. So what I would suggest to you, if you want to carry on, in court, go ahead. Prepare, but be prepared to lose. If you just want to do, but after that, let me tell you something. If that car is in your name, I would fucking be sending a tow truck to the school and hauling that thing away. Hauling that thing away. If your daughters don't want a relation, truly don't want a relationship with you, don't give it to them. Don't give it to them. Nothing you can do at this point. You can try to sue for custody, but listen, you're 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 in a you're in a real disadvantage because you know of how you left. He had custody, like. So he can, he, he's got 12, 12 years to set a narrative about you. I mean, your daughters had been driving themselves to your house at this point. Your daughter has some independence here. At some point, your children do make a choice. They're old enough to know better, especially the oldest one. I'd still go into court and get it on the record. My youngest told me that she's been abused. She's been slapped in the face by this woman. This woman's not even her mother. She's not even a stepmother. Who is she? At some point, you got to stand up for you just for yourself, not even for your daughters. You got to do it for yourself. Part of the reason is your daughters can, can say no to you like this is because they have a feeling you're not going to stand up for yourself and eventually you'll run away. But on the same, on, on, on the same, in the same vein, you can't let them just, you can't let them just treat you like this either. They're old enough to know better at this point. They're absolutely old enough to know better, and they're doing it for the best situation possible. I hope that car isn't in your name, because if it's in your name and you're letting her drive around like that in it, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, 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 no. So the best advice I would give you, you know, you could see what happens in, in, in family court. You got nothing to lose, but be prepared to lose. Be, be prepared to lose. But at that point, you can't keep chasing your daughters. You can't because they're just going to keep slapping you away. There has to be some consequences for, for alienation. Because at some point, the child does, make the cho does begin to make the choice. Your oldest daughter did this for a car. That's why. Instead of just telling you, he took the wheels off my car if I don't see you. 
Oh, really? And you know what you should have done? And you should have called the fucking tow truck, had the thing towed the hell out of there, okay, and had new tires put the fuck on it. Your daughter would rather have a car that you gave her, though. Would rather have a car than the standard than a relationship with her mother. That's a choice. That's a choice, Jesse. And it's a hard one. It's a hard. It's a. It's a hard fact that you're gonna have to realize. Your daughters are past the point where they're just innocent little girls at this point. So. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this with someone who needs help or can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it growing, supported, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.